Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So today's video is gonna be something a little bit different, a little bit special. Uh, Erin wanted me to go ahead and try to make or copy a swing that she wanted for the front porch. And the swing that she wants is $3,700. That's right, $3,700. So we're gonna try and replicate it and make it ourselves. And I went out and spent probably $300 on the lumber some huge bolts because this thing is gonna be extremely heavy and obviously the rope to be able to support it. So let me show you what the swing looks like and uh, how we're gonna do it. All right, so I used to do this a lot. I used to make a lot of our furniture in our old houses that we lived in. And I'll always kind of look at a picture and then see if I can like replicate it. Uh, this is a little bit different. I kind of went a little bit overkill on this one. As you can see from the picture up here, it's kind of hard to tell what pieces are what. None of that lumber in that picture actually looks like you can actually get it from a store. Um, nothing looks like, for example, like a four by four, but it doesn't look big enough or it looks too big uh, or too small that a six by six is kind of overkill. So it looks like it's more like nominal type of lumber, like where it would actually be like maybe that, like that bottom piece right there might actually be like a four inch by four inch instead of three and a half by three and a half, or maybe even it's bigger. It's like maybe five inches or four and a half or something. So uh, maybe why it's $3,700 is because they actually are cutting the lumber down. Um, again, none of the pieces in that picture kind of look like exactly what you can get. Uh, definitely, definitely not like two by threes or two by whatevers or four by fours or six by sixes. So we need kind of something in between all of those numbers, but unfortunately we can't do that. So we went ahead and we got six by sixes. Had to get ground contact treated lumber because nobody has six by sixes unless you order them. And then of course we got two by threes and we got two by fours and we got two by sixes. So like I said, this swing when we're done uh, is gonna need this heavy rope and these heavy bolts. Uh, I think this rope itself can support 700 pounds. And instead of just going like up through an eye bolt and back down, we're actually gonna do just like the picture. And we're gonna do four ropes and four eye bolts to really separate this load. Not to mention, I think the weakest link's gonna be up in the rafters. And I think I'm gonna build out a header with a six, uh, two by six and then put those eye bolts up through there and we'll probably like double header it. But I'm actually kind of worried that the trusses up there on the bottom cord might actually get like pulled down. So after we build out the uh, uh, kind of header up there that the eye bolt will go through, I think I'm actually gonna take some two by fours and screw them into the bottom cord and screw them up into the top cord so that way it's got like extra pull down strength so those bottom cords like basically aren't relaxing uh, every time somebody like sits on it or if you got too many people sitting on this because the dimensions of this thing that I'm showing you right here will fit a twin size bed. So this is quite a big swing, although it's not even really a swing because you do have four ropes there. Uh, it can't really swing back and forth as opposed to, if, again, if we just kind of went up and then back down like in a triangle, it would swing through the eyelets a little bit, but uh, it is what it is. But I'm gonna try and replicate this thing as best as I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that front lower piece. Uh, we know we need to cut this thing down to I think 81 and a half. And then as you can see right there in that bottom corner there, we need to basically just cut it on down and cut it on in. So that way our, what I think looks like a four by six ends on each side, will kind of sit in there and we'll glue it, we'll screw it, and we'll do everything we can to make this thing kind of bulletproof. All right, so that was kind of a pain in the butt. Now we have to guesstimate how tall this thing is based on like when you're sitting in it and you've got your armrest there. So 
If we guesstimate that the bottom is five and a half inches, that top piece right there looks to be like a three by two, and that actually looks like a three by two. So obviously we don't have that lumber to replicate. Uh, but that corner post there, I don't know, it looks like it could be a, a, a three by six or, or a four by six uh, for what we have. So I do have a four by six. So we'll just measure out down on this end, five and a half inches this way, and then we'll come in three and a half inches. We'll cut that down to the depth that I wanna go, which that looks to be maybe like two inches down. So we'll cut the hand, set the handsaw just to cut down there. And then we gotta get out the uh, Japanese saw because I don't think we'll be able to cut in there three and a half inches uh, with my hand saw. So we'll have to go down as far as we can and then finish it out by cutting it in. But we're just notching out the end. These things are wet, they're frozen, and they weigh an absolute ton. I lied, let's cut the, uh, the uprights first out of this four by six. So to me, that looks like five and a half inches on the lower lumber. That cushion looks to be about six inches. If you stack another cushion on top of it, that'd be another six inches. And that top plate looks to be about two inches. So I guess if we take 5.5 plus 12 plus two, we got 19 and a half inches overall. So if we subtract the 5.5 on the bottom and the two, I mean, we're coming up with roughly 12. So if we cut these upright 12 inches and we stack it on top of there, depending how down, uh, how far down we cut, which actually I do need to account for that. Yeah, let's see what this looks like if we cut one of these at 12 inches and then stack it up. We got enough that we can make a mistake. I don't know, what do you think? You're sitting here on the porch, obviously this would be higher. Your arm sits here. I think that's too short, because even if you add a two incher on here, that actually doesn't feel bad there, but this thing has to drop two inches down this way now. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and make this probably 15 inches, so that way it can drop two. We only have a two, an inch and a half board that's gonna go on top of here, so I want it up a little bit taller for an armrest. That's better. We just need to drop it down two inches. So we'll make these guys out of uh, 15 inches long. And then again, we already know that this guy is 81 and a half. Almost couldn't be any better if I wanted. So we're tight as a drum in here. All the way down the sides are pretty much 100% flush. And down this back side, it's a hair off. But we can go ahead and smooth that down just a little bit. There's just a little bit of a lip on here. And I can tell my blade right here in this corner walked in a little bit off of this line. So I can either shave this down a little bit or shave this side down a little bit. But it doesn't have to be perfect. Me doing stuff like this, I'm a little bit harder on it, so it's a little bit more rustic than that fine finish. But we will be cutting down these sharp edges here. I will go ahead and get a, a bit to just kind of round these edges just ever so slightly, so that way they don't create splinters. And we will stain it, we will put a clear coat on it. But as far as I'm concerned, doing stuff like this is as perfect as it's gonna get. All right, now the question is, is how do we attach this? Uh, we need to obviously screw in from this side, but I don't want anything exposed. I do have massive GRKs, but there's no real way to hide the GRK head, at least not that easy. You'd have to like drill in a hole, basically a pilot hole, and then screw the GRK in, and then come back with a wooden dowel and stick it in. 
I do have a wooden dowel, but I'm not exactly sure GRKs are needed in this fashion. So what I think I'm gonna do is just go ahead and use the wood glue, regular construction screws, and we'll pre-drill these holes way down in so that way this construction screw basically will bite all the way down in there. And then this hole that's left this way, we'll go ahead and fill it in with a, uh, a wooden dowel. So basically the screw and the fastener is completely hidden. As for the bottom screwing up in this way, since you're never gonna see the bottom, we can go ahead and use a GRK and screw all the way up in here to lock it down this way and to lock it down in this two inch notch that we just did. Actually, we can't screw this guy down completely flush because what I just noticed, the rope goes all the way down through here and out the bottom. Well, there's no way they drilled a hole all the way through this piece of lumber. So what it looks like in that picture is they basically notched this out in like an L shape. So I think we need to go outside on the table saw and cut basically this section out like into here and into here. And then the rope will go down in on the inside of this and it won't be hidden. You'll be able to see it when you're looking inside of it. But that way and try instead of trying to drill an inch hole all the way down through this, we just hide it on this inside corner. So we're gonna have to take this inside corner out first. And then we'll go ahead and screw up from the bottom and screw on in this way. All right, I lied again. I think this is what they did. I just ran this down through the table saw about five times and then broke out all the uh, inside media there. I think this goes on like this because if you look at that side picture really closely, it looks like the two by four sets in like this a little bit because not all of it is exposed and that's a perfect way to basically hold this in. So stick that in just a little bit then you'll build out this V shape right here with this center one. Then when we send a screw down through this way, you're not gonna snap these winglets off because this is in there. So this will all kind of pinch together and pinch in when you screw into here. And then as you can see, you've got just enough room for that rope to go down through. So I think that's what they did. So I gotta do uh, three more of these, cut all these to 15 inches cut the back one of this too. And then that should finish our base, except uh, the planks that are gonna sit down that you see right here. Those planks are gonna sit down to actually hold up the mattress. I think for this one, we're just gonna take a two by three and kinda like basically stick it onto here. We'll screw in this way where you won't see it and we'll screw into the post. And then our six by six plates that the mattress sits on will sit on here and we can screw straight down into the two by three. I know this isn't a two by three, but I'm just telling you what I'm thinking. And then we'll just screw down there as we go on down there. And then this entire base will be completely done. All right, we are done with the front. We're done with the back. And I can't remember if I showed you or not. I worked all night, I'm really tired. Uh, through this hole right here, and then through the bottom hole that I drilled out, the rope will go down through that way and will pop up. And then once I put that, uh, uh, two by four on top with a hole drilled down through it. The rope will just come up here as a guide wire almost, but it'll be knotted on the bottom there so the rope can't fall through, or actually the, the swing can't fall down off of the rope. So we'll just knot it on the bottom and it goes all the way up to the ceiling. So right now I just need to get these two together and we're gonna take some two by sixes. We're gonna cut those down. And again, those are the benches where the mattress will actually sit on. I just need to make sure that I get that distance right. So the mattress uh, goes all the way to the back or at least uh, actually, if you look at the picture, that backboard uh, is sitting kind of right in half of the, the back beam. So still gotta figure out how I'm gonna attach that uh, down to this. Obviously we'll glue it but uh, screwing pieces of wood together in the shape of like a T, uh, you got three and a half inches to go down through. Or actually, I think that picture is a two by six. So we've got a really long way to go down there to get that to attach. So I may need some longer screws or we're gonna have to dr drill some really deep pilot holes. And then again, fill those uh, with the dowel rod, which uh, I do need to uh, get a new drill bit. That dowel rod is 7 16 I think, or 
uh, let me hold on, I forget. Yeah, 7 16ths, and I don't have a 7 16ths inch drill bit. So the hole is either too big or the hole is too small. So we want those dowels to fit in there very snugly so that when we chop them off and stain it, all everything is hidden and it looks good. So let me at least get to working on the bench itself and uh, we should be good to go. Uh, and then we can figure out the back brace, the side railings, and then we'll be done. That'll be it. So let's knock out the floors real quick and make sure we get this thing the correct depth. All right, guys, I am starting to really drag here, but everything is done. Our twin bed swing is ready to go. And if you guys are wondering, I think you just purchased a twin bed that uh, is basically waterproof. So people who have like accidents in beds, that's the type of bed you wanna get. And then you purchase an outside cover that goes on it. And then of course you get outside pillows and all that jazz. But I just got my hooks hanged. This thing is gonna hang dead center in this roof over here. So those are the back hooks. And what I did I thought was just pretty simple. It seems pretty strong, especially when you're dividing that load up over four spots. So we just have a double two by six kind of header here that is screwed and glued. So this is kind of all bolted and glued together. And then as you can see, our bolt comes up here with a washer. I may swap out that washer for a bigger one. I'm not exactly sure how much uh, width I need so it doesn't like pull down all the way like through the boards, but it's like a one inch washer and that's obviously a, uh, a half inch bolt. So I could imagine that this thing, I think like I said, holds up a couple hundred, if not even a thousand pounds or something. I think the weak link might actually be the threads before you actually break a half inch eye bolt or like pull it apart like taffy. Threads are either gonna fail first or something else, but I think four of those divided up will be more than enough. I wish I could hang it right now, but uh, I'll measure out and put my next uh, two by sixes on my headers kind of up in here for the front ones. And then I do have like four or five boards ready to go up there on the ceiling that I can continue and uh, move on up but you guys will probably already see this video is uh, actually done with the porch, depending on which one I put out first, either the porch or the swing. But, but yeah, that's gonna look good. I like that. I think it's gonna work out perfect. I'm not gonna be able to carry this thing out by myself and I'll probably wait to put the backrest on because I'll, I'll build it out because we gotta get this thing through the door and I don't know how tall I'm gonna make the backrest because we're gonna have to put this thing on its side and walk it out through the front door. But uh, I think I'm gonna call it a day for here right now except maybe throw these boards on over here uh, on the ceiling that I have uh, available. And then I just gotta get to more staining. It takes forever to do all of these boards. And then by, I think I'll probably need seven or eight boards going up before we can get the front two in. And then we can hang this thing at any time. And then we could just take our time building out the sides and the back. And then I'll let Aaron go ahead and pick out a mattress and everything. But hang tight, I will finish this video up probably tomorrow. So you guys can see the full wrap up of everything. Cause my dad is coming over and uh, we're probably gonna need his help to pick this thing up and move it outside. But hang tight and I'll see you guys back then. You guys are gonna hate me. I got a second wind. I stained three more boards, threw them up there, got my outer bolts in and my plates or my hanger, header, whatever you wanna call it. I got this thing out here on my own. I slid it all the way through the house and by the time I got to the, uh, the threshold, picked it up and pulled it out a little and then I stood it up on its face so that way I wouldn't rip the threshold up. And then actually, I kind of just put it on my back by like grabbing one of these right here and then just kind of like turtle shelling it over to where I needed it to be. A Little bit difficult. I got some uh, buckets, some five gallon buckets and put it up on each corner. And then I just ran the rope, pushed it up a little bit higher than it needed to go to tie the knots on the bottom. I don't think it's 100% level. I think this side over here needs to come up, but we also need to let this relax for like a day or two and let that like rope stretch out. And then once it stretches out, we'll adjust it. But uh, I still obviously got to put the back on. I still obviously have to put the side like crosses or whatever pattern that we're going to do over here and what pattern we're going to do in the back, etc. But uh, I don't know. What do you think? Once it gets stained and lacquered, you think that'll be a nicer $300 port swing instead of $3,700? I don't know. I love it because again, it is the size of a twin bed. So you can see like it is absolutely huge. You can definitely put at least four people on this thing. And if you wanted to, you can come out here and take a nap 
Uh, I don't know what type of mattress we're gonna get. Like I, I think I said, it's uh, something that if someone were to have an accident in bed, it's gotta be one of those that are like completely wrapped on the inside. So hopefully when you sit on it, it doesn't make like that squishy plasticky sound cause that would be absolutely horrible. And then the outside uh, wrap that you put on it, I think that's kind of water resistant, but we can always take the pillows and stuff off, you know, during a rainstorm and stuff like that. But as long as we get this thing highly, highly uh, stained and lacquered, etc. I think it can sit out here forever because there ain't no way in hell I'm taking this thing down ever because it's it seriously got away at least 250, maybe 300 pounds. I don't know, especially when the backer goes on since we're gonna box it out with two by sixes and then some two by four crosses and then some vertical two by threes. So we still need to add at least 40 pounds to this thing, but. I don't know. I love it. What do you guys think? We'll finish this up video again uh, with all of the backing so you guys can actually see that. But it'll be a few days from now because my dad is coming over again tomorrow and we got to do the entire back porch that we have to make a video on so we can get all the floor joists done. And again, getting to the uh, back window, the back uh, door, and then we can finally finish out that freaking siding back there and have the back of the house done. So hang tight and I'll be back in a few days.